What's up guys, today I'm going to be giving you some tips on how to quickly level up your kits in Battlefield 1 as well as unlock weapons and gear. DICE has made it quite easy compared to the old Battlefield games where it seemed like an eternity to level up your kits and your soldier, but there's all sorts of different new ways to do it and I'll break those down today. This process is going to apply to all classes, so as much as you like to play with different styles when you're using the classes, the level up process will be the same. First, you have your two usual methods of gaining experience and leveling up. The first is through uh, your collective points, leveling up your actual soldier, which is called your combat score, as you're going to see in the background in a second. All points, no matter whether it's vehicles, whether it's killing, whether it's jumping on an objective, it all goes to that combat rank and your soldier rank. This is nothing new. More than likely, any FPS you've ever played has had this. With regard to Battlefield 1, though, for every level up, you're give, and this is different, you're rewarded 90 war bonds to start, and that increases to about 160 once you reach around level 10 up to about level 20 or so. It could go higher. Uh, the highest I've gotten in both the beta and my trial was about level 20, so it could go higher than that, but maybe 200 would probably be about the max. But it's 160 from what I've seen up to about level 20. And those are used to unlock and equip new weapons and new pieces of equipment, and I'll touch on this more in a second. Second, as usual again for Battlefield games, you have a second tier of unlocking, and that's your individual kit rank. You can see it in the top left corner of the screen right now, and the war bonds in the top right section of the screen. To, to level these up, kills, flag caps, MCOM plants and explosions, marksman bonuses for sniper rifles because they're back, kill assists, spotting assists, uh, anything to do with uh, like running around with your squad uh, and object like objective captures and assists, they all count to whatever class you're leveling up. Uh, these points don't count uh, toward a kit if you're sitting in a tank or a plane or a major vehicle, however. Uh, so make sure you're not in a vehicle when capping a flag, although uh, jeeps and transport vehicles don't count, so you can sit in those. When you try to unlock some weapons right from the start, you will be locked because, uh, as you'll see in the video in the background, uh, you need to be a certain kit rank to be able to unlock some weapons and some gear. Uh, or you might not have enough of what I was talking about previously called War Bonds. And you'll see an example here, just the squad level up there. That's just another kit, uh, scout class rank level up. It was actually someone spawning on me, which was kind of funny. For example, to unlock a, uh, a piece of weapon or equipment, uh, you go to the customize screen, and like I said earlier, uh, individual class rank will be in the top left corner of your screen, uh, war bonds will be in the top right, and when you actually scroll over a weapon or something similar to that, you will see it right next to it, the number of war bonds that it requires. So that's how to unlock the weapons. Now that you have an idea of how to, want, how to unlock the weapons, let's go through ways to grind through uh, leveling up kits as quick as possible. So here we go. It goes without saying, but I'm going to say it anyway. Try to win every match you play in as much as possible and play alongside your squad. And there's a reason for this in Battlefield 1 especially. Uh, you are given at the very least a 1.5 times multiplier for winning the match from what I've seen. More than likely it'll be closer to two times. This affects your combat score. So immediately a 7,000 score match becomes 14,000 immediately just by winning, or close to 14,000. They're seemingly rewarded for how the match results go. So if you smash a team, your multiplier will probably be higher. If you pull out a close victory after an awful start, it might be lower at 1.5 or 1.75 times. Even if you're losing two, stay to the end of the match to stay to the end of the match to receive the match bonuses because more than likely you'll get some sort of bonus. If you leave early, you get nothing. You, well, you'll get points, but you won't get bonuses. Additionally, you are given squad bonuses for teamwork alongside your squad. Uh, when you play as like a team with your squad together, and you're designating and taking objectives, or even killing people on the objective at, at, near those designations. All of those will add up to extra points. All of those will add up to your end game squad XP boost. At the beginning of the video, you saw me get at least 11,000 points playing alongside my squad. So take advantage of the free points by having someone designate an objective and play alongside your team. And that, of course, is going to help you win, which is more points. When leveling up weapons, you'll get service stars or general XP boost every 100 kills uh, per weapon. Uh, 
so again, you can use this to your advantage by playing with a whole majority of weapons to get 100 kills, or you can just one use one weapon and rack up a 10,000 kills. But each one's going to give you some XP boost per 100 kills, which is nice. Next, battle packs will sometimes reward XP bonuses, uh, though random. So when you get those, make sure you take advantage of them. Equip them and play them in a mode that will reward you as many points as possible in a quick short time frame, which will be Conquest, which I'll touch on in a minute. Or you can save them for double XP boosts, which, uh, or double XP events, which again, I'll get to in a second. R actually, right now. When possible, take full advantage of double XP events that come around. Combine this with the points listed above, and you'll level your soldier and your kit rank quite quickly. Uh, I, I like to play with the class that I don't regularly like using during double XP events because it gives me the best chance of maximizing points uh, with the least amount of time needed to play the class. So as previously mentioned with service stars, try and edge your weapons close if you know a double XP event is coming. So say you have four or five weapons at 97 kills. Try to get the three kills with those four or five weapons during one match. Uh, and you'll get massive rewards with the additional double XP this way. Next, whatever kit you're using, make sure you use that kit to its strengths. For example, playing in medium to long range as an assault player will do you absolutely no good as it's a close range specialist style of class. Sniping is best in medium to long range, though I'm sure most aggressive snipers with skill will be able to use it in close range, but on average, the average player should be using it in medium to longer range for more consistent success. And the logic's simple. If you're using your class wrong, you'll die, you will die more, you're going to get less kills, and of course, being dead means you're going to be in the respawn screen most of the time, which means you're not going to benefit from any uh, squad XP boosts, and you're not going to be able to jump on as many objectives as you like. So, don't try and force a square peg into a round hole. Play the class as, as it was intended with your crew. You'll gain much more experience and points this way. Lastly, I wanted to sort of get into game modes. Like I said earlier, Conquest is my favorite because of the math. You get 25 points every few seconds for about 275 total if you're there the entire time capturing the flag. And you get another 500 points for capturing it. If you're taking an enemy flag, You'll get the same 275 points for neutralizing the flag, another 250 points for actually neutralizing it, about 100 points more for leveling it back up to claim it as yours, though it's weird because I have seen that uh, the tendency is to stop at about 100 points as opposed to give you another 275. And of course, you get another 500 points for capping it. Uh, so it's insane the amount of points you get. Between capping flags, uh, spotting assists, kill assists, shooting and hitting targets but not actually killing them, marksman bonuses, surveillance assists, kills, explosions, flag defenses, etc. You get tons of points toward each kit per round playing conquest. You can also do this in the operations mode as well because the, the, the uh, process for rewarding points will be pretty similar. You can also play rush, it's my favorite mode. The problem with Rush is it's actually somewhat better in gathering consistent amounts of kills. Like you can, I regularly probably get 20 plus kills a match, even if it's a shorter match. Especially if you're playing as a more aggressive sniper in sort of that 50 meter range. The problem is the likelihood of you getting tons of objective points uh, per match isn't very good. Because even if you're facing a crap team, if two or three guys jump toward an MCOM at once, only one of them is going to get credit for the plant. So, I mean... The odds of you actually getting regular amounts of MCOMs every single match, assuming that teams aren't stacked against you or even for you, because that means, again, you've got competition, not very good. Arming an objective, again, like I said, is only toward one player, so it's probably better for generating consistent amount of kills, especially if you're playing as a, the scout class, uh, because it's condensed, it's more streamlined, you know where the enemies are going to be coming from, but again... Conquest gives you far more points on average just for capping objectives. Uh, again, if you don't like either of those two modes, you can go to Team Deathmatch, but again, uh, it's more inconsistent this way because you're completely relying on your ability to get kills and completely relying on your team not being awful and balance not being awful, so you're just sitting not... Uh, like, I've had matches in TDM where you're just sitting behind a crate trying not to get killed because you're spawn-trapped. If it's your preferred method, go for it, but you won't get as many points as playing objectives. Lastly, to do with uh, actual game modes, to tie into game modes, 
A new system of medals has been added to Battlefield 1. You have an option of five per week, and they reset each week, although you can only activate one at a time. There's between three to five levels of progression to earn each medal, and you have to complete all the stages to, to actually earn the medal. You get small XP boosts per stage, so say in a five stage medal you get three of them. You'll, you might get say 250 points per stage of the medal, and then say 10,000 when you're done the medal. So you get small XP boosts as you progress, and then one large one when the entire thing's done. Uh, lastly, just for fun, <laughs> Uh, for maximum point, gates, I'd, point gains, I'd probably suggest you use any battle pack XP drops on a double XP event along with edging multiple weapons alongside your squad designating everything in a conquest match. And you'll probably jump multiple levels if you do really well in that match. If you have any additional tips you think I've missed, suggest them in the comments. I'm open to anything I might have missed or anything that you think is better for you. Uh, personally though, using these tips I find that I've in the less than 10 hours I've played so far in the trial and uh, the beginning part of the game as I've just got it a couple days ago I th I'm up to level 22 23 already so it's and I have been playing rush I haven't even playing conquest if I was exclusively playing Quan conquest I'd be through the roof so if you learned any from the anything from the video please leave a like if you want to stick around for better tutorials and how-to videos subscribe stick around Consider sharing the video to social media or somebody that you might think might help uh, from watching this video. Thanks for watching. See you later.